here in my room, I just bought this new MacBook here. It's fun to actually code here in Berlin. But you know what I like more than materialistic things? Knowledge. Hey guys, what's going on? Jacob here, as always. Uh, and welcome to my third video, third part of uh, AI journey, machine learning, data science. So I haven't um, progressed that much, but still I made some progress and I documented it and I want to share it with you as always. And by the way, the intro which I tried to do uh, was from this guy. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. It's fun to drive up here in the Hollywood Hills. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. I'm a lot more proud of these seven new bookshelves that I had to get. Yes, I'm pretty sure everyone knows who is Ty Lopez. And yeah, I just thought it might be fun. Okay, anyway guys, uh, let's jump to work! Alright, now we here are in my computer's view. So first of all, let's start by looking at um, Evernote as always. As I told you, I haven't done much progress uh, with data science because I simply moved a little bit into maths, uh, but I'll talk about just in a minute. So first of all, I read a really nice article it's about differences uh, using this uh, slicing, lock and I lock. And I will just tell you what's going on. All right, let's use this example. So here we have a data, sets, a data set called tracks can load it one more time. All right, uh, so here is an example of how lock uh, works. So basically lock is looking for a location. It's checking the names. Here I pass the semicolon, I guess it's semicolon, yeah. And so it means which we are selecting all of the rows from the data set. And then I pass those two uh, names of the rows. So simply from the ID to time, give me all of the columns from ID to time. I can also, for example, go, Give me all of the columns from speed to distance. Okay, so this is how lock works. Now let's do iLock. So basically iLock is uh, for indexes. And for example, zero to two means give me all of the indexes of uh, columns from zero, which is the index, uh, index column to ID Android, which is on the second place. It works a little bit different than slicing in Python because here uh, the last index is actually included. I also learned about a really nice function, which is apply. Uh, so basically apply function means that you're applying something to every row in your data frame like this. We are trying to convert float, otherwise we'll return the none object. And this is how it works. We basically put the name of the column and we apply it for the whole uh, column. And now also I wanted to tell you uh, what does mean this uh, semicolon operator without iLock or lock, like just a slicing sample. So basically this operator means that first uh, it tries to make iLock for indexes and it will fails, then it goes back and make lock. This is why you shouldn't use uh, in the pandas uh, this operator or slicing, rather just use iLock or lock. Okay, let me talk about um, the other thing which I learned, which is group by uh, on my data frames. And basically this work are very similar to group by uh, used in SQL. Now let's get back to code to show you an example. Okay, so for example, uh, let's say that we wanna group by this and we wanna count how many there are car or a buses. So we can use tracks, then group by method we, we are taking the car or bus uh, here index. So this is what we are group buying. And then we are counting all of the um, IDs, which is like every, every single row. As you can see, we have 163 rows and the result is 
the same after adding this. So we can see that one is, for example, car, two is bus, and we have 87 cars and 76 uh, buses. Tuesday just finished. Busy day, busy days. Almost 12 hours here. And now I gotta go home, eat something. See you. Right, let me talk about the machine learning currently because I also touched this little bit. Um, yeah, I went there and honestly, I was really surprised because it turned out that it's much harder than I thought. Um, so honestly, uh, I have really a lot of lack of maths. Uh, so I decided to actually, because at first I was like thinking that, yeah, I may just learn some methods, learn how to use them, and then I will not need the math at all. But yeah, unfortunately, I will need uh, a math, which is like more advanced math. Um, and then I will jump again to machine learning. So let me show you what I, uh, what I did due to that. Okay, so uh, in the first video, I showed you this channel and uh, resources. And basically, uh, this guy is making great videos about linear algebra. So I actually watched his videos and I tried to understand some basic concepts of linear algebra. And then I believe that, I mean, it helped me, but it will help me uh, more in a future task of um, machine, for machine learning. Uh, also, I did uh, found uh, this nice course. I think I also linked it in the first or second video, uh, probability in AI. I would say this this is quite advanced course. I I started doing it, and it has like a lot of topics uh, which are not so simple. For example, algorithms. Last time I learned a little bit about algorithms such as DFS, deep first search, or BFS, which is breath first search, or a star, those um, algorithms were used, for example, for short, uh, for finding the most optimal um, path in uh, uh, graphs. Then I went a little bit further uh, to the probability. I'm currently here and I started learning about, about the bias nets and uh, bias rule, um, sorry, base rule. <laughs> this is how I think it should be pronounced. Um, let me show you what actually is my plan for this week as well. So I was watching Sendex for a long time and I was thinking that actually it's it, it may be time for going through his course about uh, deep learning uh, using PyTorch or his um, reinforcement learning uh, playlist. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, let me know what do you think. Uh, write a comment, hit the like button, subscribe my channel and see you next time.